Okay. Hi everyone, and uh, thank you for joining today. And this is the ninth cohort of the r ds Book Club. Today we're going to be reviewing Chapter One, which is the introduction. The learning objectives for today are to describe a typical data science project, explain the reasoning behind the order of the content in this book, recognize topics that are not covered in this book, set up an environment in which you can learn the topics in this book, and describe how code in the book. This is from coding your console. Okay, so this is a diagram of a typical data science project. And the steps of the data science process are importing and tidying your data, also known as wrangling your data, um, understanding your data with an iterative, iterative cycle of transforming, visualizing, and modeling, and then communicating your results to other humans. Um, and then surrounding all of this is programming, and that aids the entire process by allowing you to automate common tax, tasks and solve new problems with greater ease. Okay, so wrangling the data. Importing, tidying, and transforming, transforming your data are called wrangling because getting your data in a form that's natural to work with often feels like a fight. Um, anyone who's dealt with like importing excel files and then figuring out the title and stuff like that either way <laughs> but um column names are all right so with import you got to get your data from like a file a database or a web web app into r and so you can't get if you can't get your data into r you can't do data science on it and then with tidy um tidy data is important because of the consistent structure lets you focus your efforts on answering questions about the data and not fighting to get the data into the right form for different functions. So ideally, each column in your data should be a variable and each row in your data is an observation. And then transform. This compromises of narrowing in on observations of interest um, or filtering, um, creating new variables that are functions of existing variables or mutate and calculating a set of summary statistics or summarize. Um, those specific verbs filter, mutate, and summarize. You'll see them again when we talk about transforming data in later chapters. Um, and understand and communicate the data. Um, so visualize. A good visualization will show you things you did not expect or raise new questions about the data. Or it might also hint that you're asking the wrong question and need to collect different data. Um, regarding visualization, the GVPlot2 book provides a more in-depth details than are covered in the book. And then a model, it's a complementary tool to visualization. So once you know what you're asking, you can use a model to answer those questions. And then communicate. Communication is a critical part of data science. It doesn't matter how good your models are if nobody knows about them. So the second edition of this book will focus on Quarto and the communicate. Um, that's the new like scientific and technical publishing system that Posit has been working on. Um, so that's going to be the focus in Communicate rather than our markdown, which some of you may be more familiar with. And that was the focus in the first edition of this book. Okay, so the order of the content in this book, since import and tidy aren't that fun, we're gonna to jump to visualization and transformation first. And then after that, we learn to wrangle or import and tidy data because it is a necessary skill. And those baseline skills enable us to start programming and learning to programming helps us sim simplify the other steps. So each chapter starts with some motivating examples so you can see the bigger picture and then they'll dive into the details. And each section of the book is paired with exercises to help your, you practice what you've learned and practice makes progress. <laughs> All right, so next. And what's not covered by this book? Modeling, it's super important for data science, but it's too big of a topic to cover in the book. So you might wanna check out Tidy Modeling with R by Max Kuhn or Julie, Julia Silgi, or the Tidy Models package, which is also useful for learning about modeling. And so we're also not gonna cover big data, Working with big data is problem specific, and if you need to work with big data, there are other tools that will be useful to learn. I believe 
forgot what the book suggested. I'll find it later. They suggested a, another package. I'll check it out later and recall. And then also not covered by this book are other programming languages such as Python or Julia. This book focuses on R and mastering one tool at a time is best, but later on you can always go on to other tools. Uh, for me personally, like I started out with R, I'm only now kind of starting to learn Python. So. Okay. And then the prerequisites. So you'll need like numeric literacy and basic programming skills. Um, for those who'd want um, a prerequisite to read along with this book, Hands On Programming with R by Garrett Goldman is a good book to read side by side with this one. Obviously, you'll need R. And to download R, you'll go to CRAN. Um, it's the Comprehensive R Archive Network. And um, you'll need RStudio, which is an integrated development environment for IDE for R programming. And I've included a useful cheat sheet for the RStudio IDE. And then also the Tidyverse, which is a collection of functions, data, and documentation that share a common philosophy of data and R programming and are designed to work together to extend the capabilities of base R. So um, within, within the Tidyverse, it loads nine packages, dplyr, forecats, ggplot2, lubridate, per, reader, string, sybil, and tidyr, which are considered the core packages of the Tidyverse. And we'll also need additional packages which provide interesting data sets. I'm not gonna read them all, but we have them there. And then some conventions within the book. So the code in the book has some slight differences from code output you may see in your console. So you'll see this sign like right here. And in the book, that hash is used in front of what's called the prompt or this, I don't know, I guess greater than less than sign. And the code follow, um, it's in front of the prompt and the code following it to comment out the code. And that allows you to copy and paste code from the book into your console and run it without errors. And then the book uses a consistent set of conventions to refer to code. So functions are displayed in the code in code font and followed by parentheses, like sum here. It's for sum with the parentheses or mean with the parentheses. And then other objects such as data and function arguments are in code font without the parentheses, like flight or the X. And to clarify which package an object comes from, we sometimes use the package name followed by two colons like declare or mutate or instead of just mutate. And then bonus section, some resources for getting help. Um, pay attention to like error messages you may get. Tidyverse error messages can be helpful in debugging, but if you can't figure out what the error is on your own, copy and paste it into Google. And stackoverflow.com can be helpful, but beware. And then also, obviously, the RFDS online learning community is a great place to get help. And it's a friendly Slack community with volunteer R tutors. And if you go to rfds.io slash join, you can request access to that Slack or workspace and then if you're in in that community and when you ask for help it'd be good to make a reprex um if possible and i've honestly never made a reprex before myself but it's specifically like an r package and you could find you could find a bit more information about it here oh I don't know if you guys can see that either way. Um, so I think that's what I have for this chapter specifically. So I'm gonna shift to the, oh, you can't see that. Sorry, I gotta switch what I'm sharing. Okay. Okay. Sorry, this is all from my place. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, so we went over that. I'm gonna go to the book and then try out some of the code in the book. Okay. So we have that. Okay, so I guess going over kind of our studio IDE, for anyone who's not like super familiar with it, I'm gonna put this side by side with my R. Hopefully. Okay, so here we have like the RStudio IDE. They should look kind of similar. They should look more of a, more or less the same as in the book. You have your console here. Uh, I forgot what this one is, but then you have like the output here. And then I'm gonna do that code that's in the book. So we just had it ready. Okay, so a couple of things. Sorry. So first I'm calling the library ggplot2, and then within that, I'm calling the function ggplot, a data set mpg, um, setting the aesthetics, and then I'm gonna use geompoint. And then let me run that. Um, the main point is that doing that, running that code in the console, brought up this plot down here. This is our output that we got. And then, so the other thing, I already have tidyverse installed, so I won't install that. But when you do install it, again, it shows you that you've downloaded those nine main packages, and I'll give you some other information. And then again, back to like running our code, um, so the code you'll see in the book again, like it'll um, the code will appear like this, but like in your console it'll look like that. So if I put one plus two, it looks like that. But they don't write it like that in the book to make it easier for you to just copy and paste. Because if I copy and paste that and put it into my console and try and run it, I get an error. And again, with the Tidyverse giving you good error messages, there's an unexpected greater than sign in the greater than sign. I guess I hope that is it. That is it. <laughs> and then, so yeah, if you copy this one instead and put it, that one does run, and you get that you get that um the same output looking like what's in the book, where one plus two is equal to three. And yeah, so basically, let me, okay. And yeah, so the stuff I put in here, where it's like putting putting this in front of the prompt comments it out. So what I mean by that is like, if you put one plus two, and then put one of those signs, this equals three. It just will run the three, but if you did one plus two, this equals three, that's not gonna run because it's not, it can't compute like letters. So that's what it is to comment something out when you put that hash sign in front of it. It doesn't like, or doesn't, like read that part, I guess. What I'm saying. Um, yeah, I think that's oh, and I guess the other thing where they're saying um to make clear what packages an object comes from. So 
if I take this line of the code, for example, uh, I'm gonna copy and paste that there. So GM point, um, well, actually both of these, GM point and ggplot are part of the ggplot2 package. So if I put ggplot2 in front of this, this should still run, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, you still get the same output. Um, it's just, so that kind of just tells you that geom point comes from the ggplot2 package, but you don't necessarily have to do it, but it just kind of makes it a bit clearer for anyone, like if you're unsure where a package came from. So they might do that throughout the book and it's still valid R code, um, but it's not something you necessarily have to do when you're coding. Okay, Fine. let's see. Um, does anyone have any questions? Or comments or anything? Because I realized that took way less time than I thought it would. <laughs> um, but yeah. Let's see. Okay, we have a comment from Ken. The double colon is useful if you're not using too many functions from a library. Instead of loading the entire library, which can take up computer RAM, you can choose to load only certain functions. Yes. And I, let me see. I don't know who told me about that first. But yeah, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. So, like, how we called the library for um, ggplot2, like, if you didn't want to do that and just, like, I already did it, so I don't think I can undo it. But if you didn't want to do if you didn't want to do that, you could have just put ggplot2 geom point without um and not have to load everything that comes with it. Okay. Oh, we have way more people than we were before. Okay. So yeah, so I'm pretty much done presenting. This was like super short. But we do have new people, and I don't know if you guys would be interested in introducing yourself. I won't, I'm not going to pick on anyone this time around. I did that last time. Um, oh, more from Ken. Although it was useful to load the library if you want to. Okay, more from Ken. Although it was useful to load the library if you want to avoid having to reference the package name or if you're using many functions from a single library avoid having to reference. oh reference the package name repeatedly yeah like okay so if there's no questions or comments i think i'll just close out the meeting for today um so thank you all for joining today this was a very short meeting i know um but yeah so that's the introduction to the book and I'm just like going through stuff. So yeah, so that's the introduction to the book. And yeah, again, with the, the start stuff with the whole game where we're kind of talking about the different parts of it where it's the visualization, transformation, tidying, and import. And then you go into it a bit more detail where you have um, the visualized chapters that are 10 through 12, the transform chapters, which are 13 through 20, which discuss logical vectors, numbers, strings, regular expressions, factors, dates, and times, missing values, and joins. You have import where you learn to import using from spreadsheets, databases, arrow hierarchical data, and web scraping. And then program, which covers functions, iteration, and a field guide to base R. And then communicate, where we'll talk about Cordo and Cordo formats. Um, let me I think that might be it, unless anyone else has any comments, questions before we end for today. Oh, one last thing. So again, so basically each week we'll have someone um, discuss the various um, chapters of the book. So we have folks that are signed up for up to chapter five, but if anyone wants to sign up for any of the future chapters, if something seems interesting, go ahead, write your name in. It's cool. 
All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. And... All right.